I have owned a lot of GM cars and trucks going back to the 60s. The 1960s, not me. But back then, they were a dime a dozen, and parts were cheap. If you couldn't find what you needed at the parts house, you had a buddy or somebody that had something in their backyard. 396, 350 small block, turbo 350s, 400s, didn't matter. They were everywhere. Easy peasy. And back then, a truck that ran was worth 500 bucks. Finding quality parts, American-made parts, are hard. And muscle car prices, well, they're through the roof. And that's even four-door sedans and the old economy cars. And that's why I stick mostly to trucks. And sometimes, instead of just trying to find one part, it's cheaper for me to just drag an old corpse home and pick its bones. So the last 10 years, I focused on restoring trucks. Why trucks anymore instead of cars? Well, price is one thing. Commonality is another. Uh, Chevelles, they change body styles all the time. Usually they had a two-year run, three-year run. Uh, Camaros, first generation was a three-year run. Impalas were changing almost every other year. But trucks from 67 to 72 and then from 73 to 87, man, that makes it a whole lot easier. And there's still a lot more of them on the road, which makes finding parts, new or used, easier and cheaper to come by. Typically, the K10s are going to be valued higher than the C10s. And the K5 Blazers, especially the early models with the removable tops, well, they're really sought after. But can you make money flipping these? Are there still deals available? Well, when it comes to flipping these flipping trucks, we're about to find out. Welcome to American Outdoors. The short answer based on my experience and opinion is no. There is a narrow pathway to making a profit on selling these old trucks. I mean, there are niche markets. There's companies that do this, uh, businesses with a large presence. If you've got a, a following on social media, some of the big YouTube channels, uh, if you've got sponsorships or you can do business write-offs to help offset the cost, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the everyday guy. Can he buy and sell these things and continually make money? We may have all heard the story of the guy that bought a 77 K10 that was clean and a, a good running truck for a thousand bucks, sells it the next day for nine grand. Whether that's really uh, true or an old wife's tale or an outlier, I don't know. Down here in the south, of course, these trucks have value to folks in the north because, well, they're cleaner, less rust-free, and they don't mind coming down and dragging them back up north. Now, I'm only talking about trucks from 40 or 50 years ago. There's all kinds of money to be made on late model stuff that you can find on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. You can make money all day long on those things. And again, my numbers aren't fixed because uh, what may be considered a high price here is cheap somewhere else, vice versa. Here's a scenario that I think a lot of folks, they try to do this, and unfortunately, it fails a lot of times. And I'll try and explain why. But in my area, this is an 85 Silverado, just for an example. A running truck, a driver quality truck, 3,500 bucks. Okay, let's just say 3,500 bucks. You'll go look at it, uh, and it will get you home. It needs work, but it'll get home. It'll run, drive, shift, stop, somewhat. Let's just, for the sake of argument, the sake of discussion, say you can get it knocked down to two grand, okay? And this is something you want to flip. So you drag it home. The motor runs decent. It's not farting blue ghost out the pipe. Uh, the engine's not trying to knock on the oil pan to get out. But even so, you start under the hood. So you're going to have to change the fluids, you know, the oil, the plugs, wires, belts, hoses, if you're going to do it right, not a hack and flip. <clears throat> you're going to have to do brakes, probably, maybe rotors, calipers, hoses, lines, four tires, transmission service, U-joints. Then you get into the car. Let's just say you're, not going to, you're going to do a minimum of body work, okay? You just want something that's dependable, runs strong. But you can't sell a car where the stuffing's coming out of the seat and the dash is all messed up. So you're going to have to reupholster it. You're going to have to put a dash pad on. Fix that speedometer cable that hasn't worked since 1999 or the fuel pressure or the fuel gauge or the oil pressure gauge. You know, you're going to have to put carpet in it, maybe a headliner. 
Maybe you've got window regulators or a windshield that's busted out. 200 bucks here, 600 bucks here, 400 bucks there, and the nickels and dimes will keep rolling. And then you stop and you look at the body and you go, man. So let's say you got five grand in it now, but it looks like this, you know, it's splotchy, it's not, it's not primered, it's got rust, it needs rockers, wheel arches, maybe a bumper, grill, I don't know. But you're at five grand in it, so what are you going to sell it for? And remember, you've already talked this seller down originally, fifteen hundred bucks. Is this a seventy-five hundred dollar truck, six thousand dollar truck? So then you do the body work on it. All right. So how many hours are you going to spend uh, cutting out rockers and cap corners and replacing uh, wheel well arches, sanding, body filler, prime, sand, prime, sand, block sand, paint, color, color sand, whatever. You know, eighty hours, a hundred hours, two hundred hours. What's your time worth? What my point is is that a lot of people will do this and they'll end up with ten grand in a truck, and maybe it's worth ten grand. It's not going to be worth more than that. Sorry, it's just not. It's not a frame off. Not powder coating the the frame. We're not cleaning anything else up. You know, you're just restoring to an earlier time period. My point being is that you have to think this out and price things out accordingly. And as somebody told me a long time ago, you make all your money when you buy it. You don't make your money when you sell it. You make your money when you buy it. Now on the other hand, if you have considered buying one of these trucks to keep, to use as a semi or a daily driver versus buying a late model or a new truck, well you probably saved yourself a couple buckets full of money, especially when you consider the cost of a monthly payment depreciation or insurance, um, trying to troubleshoot these things on your own or having to take it to a dealership because of proprietary reasons. Remember, one of the biggest costs when it comes to a flip or even a restoration is labor. And most of us don't clock our hours. We don't keep track of the time we spent taking the front clip off or dropping a motor in here, doing electrical work, paint. It all adds up. All we keep track of are those receipts that we got from the supplier or the parts house or the FedEx guy. Now could I do a five grand restoration on this? Could I have five grand total in this truck and flip it? Well sure I could. And there's guys on YouTube all the time that are doing jobs like that. We don't always know what's going on behind the scenes. But I will say this, there's also hack and flips. And what do I mean by a hack and flip? Well that's a 50 foot paint job. You've got overspray on the tires and the wheel wells. You've got an 86 clip on a 75 body. You turn the delay wipers on and the headlights shut off. But when it comes to flipping a mid-level or a high-end truck, you shouldn't expect a great return. So there's money to be made, but the big profits on the mid on the mid-level and the high-end trucks, well, that's been loaded onto the train and it's left the station. If you've got a truck that you're trying to sell and it's 20,000 or more, your market's getting pretty narrow, and the people that are buying those aren't buying them for second drivers or toys, they're investments. And really, the only place they're driving those are the town parade, the car show, and then back on the trailer and into the garage. Now, with examples like that, you may be better off just keeping your money in the bank or investing it in the stock market. But it's probably a hundred times I've seen the example of somebody's trying to sell a truck for, say, $15,000. The market for a truck in that condition, in my area, may be ten. You'll offer them something less than that, and they'll just respond with, I gotta have fifteen thousand because that's what I got into it. Receipts never dictate value. On the other hand, there still is money to be made on these lower end trucks, and that's where we get to the heart of the matter. The less you do to these, the better. In fact, the photos that you see on platforms like Facebook Marketplace, where the truck is photographed and it's still on the trailer, those are the examples I'm referring to. Now, a lot of those sellers, they just went out, they just drug a truck out from someone's backyard or up from the brush. They don't even bother to unhook the tie downs. They just take some photos and they get it listed. And they've got little to no labor costs, no parts, just time and gas that it took to go get it. They could have bought it for five, six, seven hundred dollars they'll list it for $2,500 and they'll just wait. Now, regarding buying these old trucks, you should be aware to check with your local DMV in your state 
just to understand the regulations when it comes to buying a, an old truck, uh, something that may or may not have a title, whether you need a bill of sale. We just need to find that out beforehand. I'll share another example with you. There's a fella down in Georgia that sells the 1967 to 1972 Chevy trucks, GMCs, but they're all rollers, no engines, no transmissions, beat, rusty, whatever, but he's always selling them. Buying that $700 truck and putting four new tires on it does nothing but eat your profit. Remember what I said, you make all your money when you buy it, not when you sell it. It just means that now you've got $1,200 in a truck and you're still only going to get the same price, $2,000, $2,500. So what's the difference between a faded $1,000 truck with rusty quarters and cab corners versus a $4,500 truck with decent paint, maybe a couple bubbles over the wheel well, and a few pinholes under the door? The seller of the higher priced truck might disagree, but you would be paying $3,500 more to do the same amount of work to make things right. In other words, it doesn't matter if the, if the quarter panel is rusted up to the, to the trim or if it's just got a couple... Uh, blisters and bubbles going around it, you're still going to have to replace metal. If you're going to do it right, you still have to replace the metal. So flipping can be as simple as lowballing every ad you see and waiting for someone to respond. Now you can find stuff at consignment auctions and estate sales, but I'm, I'm just saying the secret is out and I wouldn't expect to find huge deals. But whether online or social media or just driving by, if you find an honest to goodness deal, do not waste time dickering, tire kicking. Good deals go fast. Now, if you're trying to steal a $6,000 truck for $3,000, pay attention to how long the truck's been up for sale. If it's had no buyers for three months, you might just be taking his truck over where he left off, and now you bought a truck and it won't sell. Above a certain price level, people go from, I'll take it as is, to becoming more discerning. It's highly unlikely that anybody's going to make a living flipping trucks. It's Highly unlikely that you're going to get rich off of it. Uh, it's fun, it's rewarding, but most of the time you're going to get out of it, hopefully, what you put into it. But the formula is very simple. Buy low, sell high. Buy it right, fix it up right. Now my opinions and my experience and the advice that I'm sharing today are only going to apply to the Joe Lunchbox, the working guy Chevy GMC pickup from 67 to 87. This is not what I do for, you know, Super Sport 396 muscle cars. That's a whole different market. Speaking of market, going back to marketplace, and a lot of you folks already know this. When I put an ad in on Facebook Marketplace, there are the little chat boxes on the bottom for, for prospective buyers, and they have automated responses. And one of them, if you've never listed on Facebook Marketplace before, probably half of the people that show interest in your item are going to hit that tab that says, is this item available? To me, that's disrespectful, it's insincere, and I don't respond, I just don't. So I also don't respond to people that are offering to give me cashier's checks for $12,000 on a $10,000 truck with the agreement that I pay their driver 500 or a thousand dollars when he shows up to pick it up. I don't uh, take codes. I don't give out my banking information. You know, the scams are terrible. So you just need to be aware of that. You got to filter through all the riffraff to get to the real buyers. So I've said that I believe for the most part you're going to make most of your money before a flip, not after. So let's, I'll give you a little cynicism. You can put 10 grand in a CD, stick it in the bank, six months you'll get a little return you can buy a mid-level or an expensive truck put more money into it spend all those weekends for six months and weeknights busting your knuckles turning wrenches and probably make the same or less now that's fine if you're keeping the truck it's fine if you're trying to learn but for the most part you just need to be aware that Unless it's a just, a, in my opinion, a bottom dollar truck, you're not going to be profiting as much as you think. I'll conflate this all down to this. It's probably easier to buy a Scottsdale for $1,000 and make $1,000 profit than it is to buy a $10,000 truck and try to make that same $1,000. Now, besides selling your truck outright, you may also get somebody that wants to offer you a trade. 
and normally they're trying to trade you something that they can't sell but if you've reached the point where somebody's offering to trade you what they can't sell for what you can't sell it might be worth considering now personally I don't do jet skis boats campers uh, wedding rings timeshares I'm not wasting my time with that it's got to be something that is is at least of equal value and maybe gives me a side door or another avenue to move up uh, cash it out or just keep improving my situation and I'll give you a recent example over the spring I put a, a used motor in a late 70 Scottsdale it's a strong motor good motor daily driver uh, ran fine two weeks after I listed it on marketplace and some local uh, social media two weeks after I put the motor in the uh, rear main blew out and when I mean blew out I mean it blew out I didn't have the time to pull the motor back out uh, and replace it about that time so I was gonna pull the ad about that time I had a guy that contacted me and offered to trade me even up for 2004 LTZ uh, Z71 uh, Chevy Tahoe uh, is loaded it's got everything and I don't need a Chevy Tahoe um, don't have any use for it right now but sometimes you get an offer that it doesn't it doesn't uh, you don't go backwards with it you can maybe go sideways or it gives you just another avenue or another opportunity to get money out or even continue to upgrade I had to put some tires on it uh, clean it up take out the subwoofers and replace the radio to me that was uh, a much better option than having to pull the motor out and replace that rear main seal when I had so many other jobs going on at the same time. Folks, I'd love to read about your stories of flips and steals, deals and regrets. Post your comments, your complaints, your questions below and I'll try to answer them as best I can, as quick as I can. But like and subscribe. And from us here at American Outdoors, thank you for watching and we'll see you again on the next episode. Bye now.